Last week, Tyrese Halliburton scored just one point against Miami, and after the Pacers lost to the Knicks, which was their fourth loss in five games, Wally Zerbiak called him a, quote, fake wannabe all-star. So we got one point game, 18 seconds left. Step back. Mr. Supposed wannabe fake all-star with the big miss. Matt Barnes harshly called out Wally for that, comments which look spot on after the Indiana Pacers NBA leader in assists per game dropped 43 points and the game-winning step back three on the Miami Heat two nights after after beating another East contender in the Boston Celtics. Tyrese Halliburton's making people look stupid. Right before breaking down why, just 10.9% of you watching are subscribed, so please subscribe if you haven't already. Also leave a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and follow at Hoops on Instagram and Twitter. So, the Sacramento Kings and Indiana Pacers swap of DeMontis Sabonis for Tyrese Halliburton has been a deal that's benefited both sides. Let's face it, given they're both ball-dominant guards, De'Aaron Fox and Tyrese Halliburton probably would have never worked out. Domas is doing his thing in Sacktown, helping the Kings to a shocking turnaround season, and it's amazing that Halley's doing the same thing in Indianapolis for the Pacers, leading them to a season that no one would have expected. Personally, I'll admit I was very wrong about this Pacer team, as I had them dead last in the Eastern Conference. However, I did predict that Ben Matherin would be a future all-star, which is seeming like it may very well be the case, given he's in the ROI discussion. I broke down Matherin in a separate video, but for Halliburton, he's elevated into the best passer in the NBA, averaging a league-most 10.5 assists per game. Proving he's valuing possession, he's also one of the best in the game when it comes to assist to turnover ratio, ranking number 7 in the league in that department. Indiana ranks number 6 in fastest pace of play, which has a lot to do with Halley's ability to constantly push the tempo before baiting defenses with elusive body language. And it's that elusiveness, in addition to of course his playmaking wherewithal, which makes this man such an incredible all-around facilitator. Halliburton's always one step ahead of the defense both mentally and in terms of his positioning. On this play, after taking his first step, it seems like it's going to be a floater in the lane with how Tyree started his attack and how his eyes are facing the basket. Instead, he drops a no-look spinning bounce pass, faking out the entire Magic defense. Let's get into the 43 piece against Miami though. On three pointers where he's taken seven plus dribbles, Halley's attempting 1.9 three pointers on average and knocking down 40.7% of them. This right here is one of those shots as the theme of the night for Miami was Hero and Lowry not being on the same page with their switching. Kyle goes under the screen, Tyler's slow to recover, and Tyrese fundamentally won two steps into a 27-foot pull-up. It's no shocker why Indiana's number one in transition baskets, as here he just weaves through the Miami defense drawing the attention of Jimmy, Bam, and Kyle, who lose Buddy Heald as Halley shuffles it to the strong side trailer, and a swift relocation gets him to catch and shoot, with Lowry sagging off. You saw the 27-foot range, but how about the famous Stephen A saying he can pull up from 30 shot? Put a check mark on that as Eric Spolstra's game plan continues to go under screens and it's raining from the FTX Arena logo for his third triple in the first five minutes of the game. The other side of the court sees this Oladipo back end of the shot clock Hail Mary get swatted by Halley. Great pass from another underrated young creator in Andrew Nemhard on the fast break, and it's another high arcing first quarter bomb for the Pacers' best player. I guess Miami was thinking it was going to be another one point showing from Tyrese. This Stephen Curry esque deep range bomb after the Heat go under yet another screen show us that the man was out to make up for that performance in the biggest way possible. The Heat went from switching screens to zone defense, but Tyrese adjusted his approach to match that. After faking the dribble pull-up, which gets Lowry to pick him up, Miami doesn't communicate, Nemhart's left wide open, who makes a good cut, saucy no-look after baiting the pull-up and penetrating from Tyrese. With his IQ, confidence, and God-given playmaking vision, plays just open up naturally for this man. But in South Beach, and really all month where he's been averaging nearly 24 points per night, it's been about Halliburton proving that he's a rapidly evolving scorer who can specifically take over with his shooting off the bounce. This next play sees him hit a very rare mid-range shot as less than a percentage of his overall attempts come from 10 to 16. Using the previous pull-ups he drained as leverage, this time on an island with his former AAU teammate in Tyler Hero, he goes high hesitation dribble to enter a combo before crossing, using another three low left-handed hezi bounces, then momentum crosses back to his strong side. Adebayo rotates perfectly, but watch this nasty reverse finish in traffic. 
For some reason, the Heat are still sagging as Tyrese hits his second 7-plus dribble 3 of the night, again in transition. Lowry seems to have learned the lesson right here as he top locks Tyrese, but watch the body language to point plus look to Turner to say, hey, set this screen before completely fooling Kyle with the momentum to his left. But Lowry's a champion, he gets right back. However, he gets hit with a shifty fake stop and go move. Then Tyrese beats the rim protection of Bam yet again, this time with a polished floater off the window. Speaking of scoring on Bam, this time Adebayo gets left out on an island, and keep your eye on the angle which Tyrese attacks, plus how he controls his body to fend off Bam to get enough space for the and one. Finally, with the game tied at 108 in the dying seconds, Tyler Hero initially switches on to Tyrese. I guess he thinks another Nemhart screen is coming because for some reason he just leaves Halley alone. Lowry tries his best to scramble back as Halliburton drains the game-winning deep-range bomb. Wally Zerbiak did apologize for his comments, but it was a weak look for him to have made such a critical comment about a guy who's playing so well and deserved positive attention. I think it threw a lot of people off guard when we hadn't been hearing too much about Tyrese in the first place, and then Wally said he was a fake wannabe all-star, of course. With how Halliburton's playing this month, it doesn't only look like he's about to make the all-star team, but he's resembling an all-NBA type player. Responding to Zerbiak's comments in an interview with Taylor Rooks, this was Halliburton's response. What did you do to Wally Zerbiak? I, I have no clue. I know the name Wally Zerbiak. I couldn't tell you where he played. I couldn't tell you what he did as a basketball player. I don't know, he had a lot to say about me. I, don't know, I was really like questioning like, first, who is this? And uh, why is he talking about me like this? Yeah, so to set the stage, he did, he called you what, a wannabe all-star? I don't know if I ever came out and said like, I want to be an all-star this year. Please vote for me. I didn't, I didn't, I don't think I've done that. Yeah, I don't know. I think he was just excited about a Knicks win um, yeah. and that got him going, but he's just doing whatever he can to get attention and uh, that's just, that's just the media these days. Well put by Tyrese, but it doesn't even matter that he's a veteran who played 12 years in the league and trash-talked him. Of course, that's why he got attention for the comments he made, but his comments were blasphemous because it was a time when Halliburton deserved respect, and instead, he was met with hate. As Tyrese alluded to, that's what you see a lot of nowadays. But in your opinion, I want to know, will Halliburton be an all-star? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shout out. And the top five commenters by March 21st earn free merchandise of their choosing. Today's shout out goes to FYI Sin, who says, I think the Warriors could use Jay Crowder if the Suns are willing to give him up to a rival team. Great take right there. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.